O Lord, in this hour, receive our supplications and direct our lives according to your commandments. Sanctify our souls, hallow our bodies, correct our thoughts, cleanse our minds, deliver us from all tribulation, evil, and distress. Encompass us with your holy angels, that guided and guarded by them, we may attain to the unity of the faith and to the knowledge of your unapproachable glory, for you are blessed to the ages of ages. Amen. Okay, say amen. Amen. Remember what it means, right? Yeah. When you say amen, it's as if you just said the prayer that I said. All right? May it be so. Indeed. Right on, brother. <laughs> so that's what is important. Now, I, I got to begin by saying I'm really humbled by your presence, by the number of people who are here. And I would say that this probably is, other than a retreat setting, the largest Bible study that, uh, that I've ever led, maybe the largest one I've ever been part of as well. So um, I, 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 I think that it says a lot about how thirsty you are. Uh, to, so I'm going to sit here so I can see him better. Find out more about okay. Holy Scripture and really find out more about your faith and maybe improve your relationship with Christ because reading Scripture will do that for you. So before I begin, it's important for us to understand that as Christians, we have a diversity of faiths. Uh, as Orthodox Christians, we come from what started as the Eastern Christian Church, and eventually after the schism was understood uh, uh, as the Orthodox Church. But post the Reformation, we had these incredible uh, uh, explosions of faiths, starting from Lutheran, the Lutheran faith, Calvinism, and so forth and so on, that have splintered off in fact, I have this beautiful, um, and I should, maybe I should have made this copy for you, but it's a wonderful chart, and, and I will make it for one of the presentations to come, but it's, it's a chart that has basically all, it says the tree of denominations. Here it is. One church, okay? The undivided church from Christ till 1054, the great schism. And then you have underneath here, the split, Orthodox Catholic, and then here you have all the splits from Lutheranism, and then every split after that, after that, but look at the one line at top. That represents the Orthodox Church, unbroken, which is incredible. But this split, this major split that we had at the Refor Reformation, where uh, Martin Luther posted his grievances with the Roman Catholic Church, and for good reason, because there were abuses that were taking place in the Roman Catholic Church, um, they, the, the Protestant church, or, or Martin Luther, and those who followed him afterwards, really sought to find the faith unchanged, right? Remember, the Roman Catholic Church at this time was uh, selling indulgences, right? You would, you would be able to pay to have a loved one's soul be moved in purgatory. Or you would go to uh, a, a, a pilgrimage, and that would shoot your chances of salvation a lot higher, and, and things like that. So. Uh, they, they kind of quantified salvation and really was uh, not really in the spirit of, of, of Christ's teachings. Let's just leave it at that. So, um, so they were abused. And unfortunately, at this time, the Orthodox Church was under the Turkish yoke. And, perhaps, and, and certainly the Turks did not want the, uh, the Orthodox Church having any communication with the Western Church because they might have gotten political assistance, and military assistance, from the West, and that was not something they wanted. So whenever the, the Ottomans would choose, and that's what they did, really, they choose the religious leaders in the Orthodox Church. They, should, they, were, they had like an anti-Western uh, mentality. But unfortunately, because there was no opportunity to dialogue between Martin Luther and all the other leaders of the Protestant uh, denominations at the time, they said, where do we go to find the true church um, unchanged? So they went to Scripture. And the problem that they had was they took Scripture out of the church and they said, now this is the church. And this is never supposed to be separate from the church. It's part and parcel of the church. Sometimes they'll say, oh, you guys are such a you know, church of traditions. The truth is, this is the greatest tradition that, was ever, that ever came out of the church. Scripture. 
It came out of the tradition of the church, and we're going to talk a little bit about that as we go. So you will have maybe some of the people that you work with, that you know with your neighbors, they'll say, well, where is that in the Bible? And you'll, you know, the, the response is, does it have to be in the Bible? Well, if it's not in the Bible, it's not, it's not part of our faith. And you say, well, who's, who said that? And, and, and they'll say, well, the, the, the Bible is the divinely, the divinely inspired word of God. Okay, and how is it inspired? Through the Holy Spirit. And, and so now you ask, so when was the Bible written? Well, the last book was the book of Revelation, written in 95 or so AD. And I was, okay. And then what happened after that? Did the Holy Spirit leave the church? Was it not present during the first couple of centuries? Was it not present during the Christological controversy, how they tried to understand who Jesus Christ was and his relationship with the Father and the Spirit? Was it absent during the iconoclastic controversy? Was it absent throughout the whole entire history? How about the doctrine of the Trinity, which not, was not even established? Father, Son, Holy Spirit was not established until 380 AD. So tell me, wasn't the Holy Spirit present then? So you can't just tell me whatever's in here is our faith from beginning to end because you've just missed out on a lot more. This is a part of our faith and perhaps one of the most important parts of our faith. But it's certainly not the only part. And that's what differentiates us from the Protestant Christians who are sola scriptura, only scripture. And we're not sola scriptura, we're so liturgical. We're so rich. We're so rich in worship. This is part of worship. Okay? So, having said that, let's talk about the role of Scripture in the church. Because, really, for most of us, we only really listen and hear Scripture when we come to church. And that's wrong. Okay? This is a wonderful way, uh, during liturgy, to incorporate our worship with God with His written word by the, the lectionary, the, 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 the collection of readings that we have on a given Sunday. Right? The church has a system of, on this Sunday, this is the first Sunday of Matthew, this is the second Sunday of Luke, and depending on the, the cycle of, of feasts and where we are, it, it moves and it changes. But the pop, bottom line is that there's a regular cycle of lessons, but they only probably take up one thirtieth of the Bible. So you're only, even if you go to church every single day, you're only going to hear about one-thirtieth of the Bible, including the Old Testament. So how much are we missing? A lot. So it's important for us to read as well. Okay. So let's begin with the presentation that I have in front of you. And I'm going to read it until you have it in front of you. Torah. Kios milain mono ni nika ki nika talaveni katholi. Kios eki diskolia na katalavi. Okay. I'll throw a couple of Greek words here and there to, keep, to, to make sure that I, I keep you engaged. And perhaps what I can do is we can translate. All right? I'll, I'll see how Google Translator does first and then I'll clean it up. All right? <laughs> My kids do it. That's how I learn how to do it. They're like, Daddy, Google. No, that's not how you learn Greek, honey. You don't use Google Translator. All right. All right. Divine Scripture is an integral part of the Orthodox Church. It is, in all reality, God's written word. In the same way that the word of God became flesh in the person of Jesus Christ, so the words of Jesus Christ became the Word of God through Holy Scripture. You like the play on words? The Word of God. Remember, before Jesus Christ was incarnate and became a man, he was still the second person of the Trinity. And when we refer to Jesus pre-incarnation, we refer to him only as the Word of God. So God's Word came down and shared God's words in his preaching. So Jesus is understood as the Son of God, uh, the Messiah, the second person uh, of the Trinity, and the Word of God. So, I once was in my senior interview at seminary, and you know, then we had to pass 
this test with all the professors were around us, you know, like, so the, the chanting professor said, chant the hymn of baptism. The other one would say, tell me uh, that dogmatic understanding of this formula. The other one would say, you know, whatever. So the, when, when it came to scripture, uh, New Testament, it was Father Ted Stilopoulos, and he said to me, he had an icon of Jesus Christ and the Bible, and he said, what is the difference? And I said, there is none. They're both icons of the Word of God. One is a pictorial one, one is in words. He said, bravo, Pelagio. <laughs> I wrote, I never spent more time writing a paper than I did for him, and I only got a B plus. <laughs> and that was so, uh, that was not the worst. So for me, it was like so frustrating. But he pushed me to, to become better and, uh, and more. If maybe we can have one gentleman who a uh, strapping gentleman get a couple of uh, more chairs, if you wouldn't mind, so that we have room for everybody. Okay. In other words, as the Word became flesh, he's, his words became Scripture. In the Orthodox tradition, Scripture consists of the Old Testament, the 39 books that the Jews and Protestants accept, along with a collection of 10 other books, Deuterocanonical, that the Orthodox Church has included as part of the canon or collection of books. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. And the 27 books that constitute the canon of the New Testament, accepted almost by all Christian faiths. So the Bible, when you, find, when you just get a Bible from the store, it'll have the 39 books of the Old Testament and the 27 books of the New Testament. That includes Gospels, Epistles, so forth and so on. Except if you get the Orthodox Study Bible or, let's say, the Oxford Study Bible with the Apocrypha. That has the additional books, and we'll talk in a little bit about how, what those books are, where they came from, and um, how we understand it a little bit. The word testament mean, means an agreement or a covenant. In the Old Testament, it was the agreement between Yahweh, the God of the Old Testament, and the people of Israel, originally enacted by Abraham, where he's, you know, God said to Abraham, I will be your God, and you will be my people. Remember, before this, Everybody was polytheistic. 